to the Urban Dictionary. How many of you guys have one of those in your back pocket this morning? Squad goals, an aspirational term for what you would like your group of friends to be or accomplish. Again, an aspirational term for what you would like your group of friends to be or accomplish. A squad is a group of friends. You guys are tight, right? You, you go out together, you have fun, you do things together, you enjoy spending time together. How many of you guys have had a squad at one time or another in your life, a group of friends that you enjoy being around? Raise your hand. Yes. Having a squad is, is, is important. We have to have friends. We have to have people that we enjoy having a good time with. But there is a big, big difference between a squad and a God squad. There is a big, big difference between having a group of friends that you enjoy spending time with and being linked, being knitted at the soul, being connected, and having this spiritual bond where you have allowed God to be so, such a part. I'm talking about the glue of your relationship where, you know, all the walls come down. You really just begin to pour yourself out before these people. You you laugh together. You cry together. You believe God to move mountains together. You you pray for healing. You you, you link arms in agreement, and you do life together, and it's real. There's none of this fake stuff. There's none of this this, uh, this, this drama stuff. There's none of this going around and and, and, and talking behind the other person's back, and you got this drama, and then you, you, you you break off the friendship. No, 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 no. There's none of that. In a real God squad, It's an authentic, real relationship that is extremely safe because you've allowed God, you've allowed Christ to be at the very, very center of your friendship. In today's culture, you guys know, even just 10 years ago, uh, things were so different in our culture. I mean, in regards to friendship, we are becoming, as, as a society, we're getting busier and busier and busier and busier and busier and busier. And with technology, I'm thankful for technology, we are more connected through technology than we've ever been. I I am able to stay connected with friends that I went to high school with. I haven't seen them in like 25 years, but I know what they look like. I know what they do for a living. I know what their kids look like. I know what they did on vacation this summer. I'm connected with them. I don't need to go back for a family reunion for a, for a high school high school, high school family reunion and just to, to touch base and find out what's going on. I know what's going on. We're connected in that respect. But there's never been a day or a time when we've been so disconnected in our friendships and in our relationships. We're so busy, we meet ourselves coming and going. We don't even know which way we're going. We don't even know what day of the week it is. We're working so hard, and life is so full that a lot of times we don't even know our neighbor's name. Honestly, don't raise your hand, but do you really know your neighbor's name? Some of you might. Some of you might not. Statistics say that over 50% of Americans don't know their neighbor's name. That's what I'm talking about. We are more connected than ever through technology, but more disconnected than ever when it comes to what real friendship is all about, right? We're in the days of social media, and you have all these gazillions of friends, but are they really your friends? I mean, let's be real. Are they really, really your friends? Let's watch this video and find out. Bro. Guess who just got 2,000 friends on their Facebook? This guy. Yeah, but those are just Facebook friends. They're not real friends. Yes, they are. Nope. All right, I'll prove it to you. (laughs) Hit by a car in the hospital, hashtag come visit me, hashtag lonely, hashtag see you soon, hashtag hashtag send. Told you. You know, you may have 2,000 friends on Facebook, you may have 1,000 followers on Instagram, but honestly, when you're in the hospital, Or when you're going through a really difficult time in life, it's not going to be your social media friends that are going to show up 
in that room. It's not going to be those people that have been following you who are going to call you up on the phone and who are going to encourage you, who are going to pray with you. It's going to be people that you've surrounded yourself with in this God squad. And it doesn't happen without being intentional. You got to really make up your mind, like, who do I want to be around? Who do I want to influence me and my family and my kids? You got to make those decisions early on. And as pastors, when we planted this church almost 11 years ago, next month. We sat down as, as we knew that God had birthed a different type of vision in our heart. We talked about, you know, here's the mission for what we're about to do. And our mission is this, to lead people into a real, and that word is so important, a real, not superficial, a real, not fake, a real and life-changing relationship with Jesus that's contagious. That's what we came to Grove, Oklahoma to do. But how does that play out every single week? I want you to take a look at this scripture. It's familiar if you've been in the church, but it's found in Matthew chapter 28. I'm going to read verses 19 and 20, and it says this. Therefore, go. Can you say go? This word go in the Greek, which was the original language, it literally means as you are going. All right? So it doesn't mean jump on a plane and go to Africa or China, although that's awesome and God calls people to do that. What it literally means is as you are going about daily life, as you go to the bank, as you go to the grocery store, as you drop your kids off at school, as you go to work, as you are going, make disciples. Now around here, we had a vision to make it easy for people to go because the average person is so busy and terrified to walk up to somebody and say, hey, Do you know Jesus? I mean, it's hard, isn't it? I'm not making light of it. It's hard. Because why? We might be rejected. People might be like, you're a freak. Like, you're crazy. And we used to walk up to people and say, hey, do you have a church? Well, we realized, throw that one out, right? Because they'll name one on the corner. Like, they're like, yeah, you know, uh, yeah, I go to that church. I'm like, it's on the corner. First church of the Methodistical. Yeah. Like, and they they struggle for the name. You're like, that's awesome. You know. What's your pastor's name? They're like, Uh, oh, oh, yeah, I think they got a new pastor. And you realize really fast, like, the average person, don't even ask them if they go to church, okay? But what you can do is you can simply, as you're going, you can invite them to church really easily. And so we throw these invites out on seats every week, and we challenge you to take a couple. How hard is it to just drop them wherever you go and leave a trail? I'm going to tell on some people here, but I won't point you out, okay? One of the guys in our church that's on staff here, he's a manager at Lowe's. And he got called into the office one time, right? And they call him in and they said, look, this isn't funny anymore. Like, we are finding these right here. And I know where you go to church. They're like on every aisle, dude. And he said, I'm not doing it. Like, I haven't brought any of those in here but you did. And so everywhere you go, you're inviting people to the house of God. I got a picture one time from one of our surf team and it was a shoe. And I was like, what is that? And it was a brand new pair of shoes at Walmart. And in the shoe was a card. Another time I got a picture and it was in the gas station pump, right? You got to take the card out to swipe your card to get some fuel. Another time it was in a red box and it was like, I put two bucks and an invite in that red box so they can get their next movie and look at how generous they were. They could also come to church. So we make it easy for you to go and reach the masses. But listen, once we get him here on a Sunday morning, that's all about the go. Get him here. God's presence will meet you right here because that's our number one priority is that when you come in this room, it's not just a big concert and a comedy show. It's about God's presence because that's what changed my life. And that's what's going to change everybody's life. And so once you're here and you've experienced God's presence, now we got to go a little bit deeper. We've got to take you on a journey to become a true follower of Jesus Christ. And that's where midweek really comes in. That make disciples, it goes on to say, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have. I can't even read it. Commanded, sorry. I'm half blind and I should wear my glasses. Teaching them to observe all that I have commanded. That's where our midweek really, really comes in. All right, so clear your throat, sister. All right, 
Matthew 19, 28, 28, uh, I'm sorry, 19 through 20. We used to teach our kids this in kids' church. We did. I'm not going to sing the song, but they Don't, because I don't want to. Okay. Just kidding. Just say it's really a catchy tune. Um, but but uh, God, I want to talk about connect. Can I do that? Can we switch gears and talk about connecting today? So um, when, there's two things that God wants to transpire in your life each and every week. Two things, and I want you to remember this, connect and grow. This is the vision for our midweek experiences. When we break it down, this is our midweek mission. God wants us to connect and grow. When we talk about connecting, we're talking about this, this binding together, this linking up. Everybody say link up. Here's the definition, to bring together or into contact so that a real link is established. God intended for the church to be a place where we can come and we can let our hair down. We can be real. We can be transparent. We can be ourselves because when you get into a God squad, you got to let the walls down so that the healing, uh, the mending can begin. God can begin to do a work when you let the walls down and you get engaged in relationship with others. Now, I know what some of you might be thinking. I've been burned so many times, you know, in relationships and friendships and just putting myself out there. And it's just, I I really don't want to go back to that. But I'm telling you, When you get into a real, authentic God squad, God begins to do things that will blow your mind when it comes to a whole new level of friendship and what friendship is supposed to look like. Uh, I'll never forget this. We we were in a life group one Wednesday night, and it it came around time for prayer requests. And the life group leader, it was Brandy, I'll tell on her, and she said, um, she said, uh, okay, so, so does anybody need prayer? Uh, you know, raise your hand and let us know how we can pray for you this week. And this guy in the back raises his hand. And he said, yeah, um, I need prayer. She said, okay, what's going on? He said, um, I'm drunk. Like right now, I'm drunk and I'm really struggling. And this guy had had such a rough week, such a rough week. And I was so proud of Brandy. She just came right back with, you know what? We are so glad you're here. You are, you came to the right place. Amen. That's exactly what he needed to do. That's exactly how he needed to respond. And you know, we ended up talking to him after life group that night and he had had a horrible, horrible week. He had just really just, get, he said, I just give up. I don't know what to do. And tonight he said, here I am. I'm just, I'm, I'm wasted. And he said, all I could think of was, you know, I just need to be, I just need to be in God's house around God's people, rubbing shoulders and just being with other people who I know they're not going to judge me. They're going to love me. They're going to understand my struggles and they're going to pray for me and they're going to lift me up. That's what connecting is all about. That's what real friendship is all about when you're a part of a God squad. The Bible explains a God squad, God squad kind of like this. It's about, it's like a building. Okay. Like this church building. Uh, there's so many intricate parts that are connected. You know, there's boards that are screwed together. There's, there's some things that are glued down. There's, there's things that have been stapled and nailed. And there's all these different ways that these things have been fastened, all these materials. And they've come together to create this one large, strong, sturdy building. All right? Listen to what the Word says in Ephesians 2 and 22. It says, and in you too, in Christ, you too are being built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by his spirit, right? So when we make these connections, these connections provide stability and support in our lives, just like a building provides stability and support uh, for, for our homes and for our families. Uh, sometimes you might have emotional struggles. You might have financial struggles. You might be having marriage challenges. Whatever you're going through, it's the perfect time to get around greatness, to get around God's people in God's house, rub shoulders, and link up and connect. Ephesians 2 and 20 says this, you are no longer strangers or outsiders. You belong here. Look at somebody and say, you belong here. Now say it like you mean it. Come on, look at somebody else. Just start over. Start over. Look the at somebody side. else and say it with some passion. Right. You belong here. You belong here. That's what I want to hear. You belong here. With as much right to the name Christian as anyone. God is building a home. He's using us all, irrespective of how we got here in what he is building. He used the apostles and prophets for the foundation. Now he's using you. Fitting you in brick by brick by brick, stone by stone, with Jesus as the cornerstone that holds all of us together. Amen? Amen. 
We see it taking shape day after day. This holy temple, we together, these friendships, this, this, this binding together of a real church family. It's a temple that's being built by God. All of us built into it, a temple in which God feels quite at home. You know, it's interesting. When I was back in college, I left home, and I went to college, and I had to find a new church all on my own. For a girl who grew up in church, I was in church from nine months before I was born, right? Until I left for college, and when I went to school, I decided to go to the church that, like, tons of people went to. Like, it was the happening place to be in Joplin. And I'll never forget, man, I walked in, and I was, like, pumped because I'm like, I'm going to get involved here. This is going to be awesome. This is a great, big, nice church. And I walked in, and I remember the person at the door, like, that was the day of bulletins, and they, like, shook my hand and gave me a bulletin. And, like, they smiled. They were nice. Then I walked in. I made my way to a seat near the back, and nobody said anything to me. And so I was like, okay, you know, like, after church, somebody will talk to me, right? And so I go through the service. Man, worship was awesome. Big, awesome worship team. Pastor preaches a message. Phenomenal. Feeds me. I get up. I walk out the door, and nobody says one word to me. Now, interestingly enough, I was a college kid, and there were lots of people from my college that attended that church, but nobody talked to me. And I wasn't a weirdo, okay? You're thinking, like, you were strange. That's why, Misty, like, nobody wanted to talk to you. Like, I didn't look weird. Like, I looked like everybody else. I fit in. So I left. The next week, I was like, well, it's just the first week, right? I did that for four weeks in a row. And the only person who ever spoke to me was the person at the door opening it. Now, listen. Church is not just about coming and being fed and experiencing God's presence. It's about making those connections. So you know what I did? I found another church. I left. And even though that was an awesome church, I didn't get connected with anybody. When you go to church, you want to feel like, kind of like that old friend song, like where everybody knows your name. Like you want to know people. You want to connect with people. I wasn't friends. That was Cheers. Oh, Cheers. Where That's everybody right. knows your okay, name. Okay, I didn't watch any of that. Ba, ba, ba. Do you want to I go didn't grow up with people? cable or anything. Like I was like, I was so sheltered. <laughs> your name. Cheers. Da, 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 yes. Da, da, da. You want to play da, da, da. it? Yeah. Can you play it? We don't have time. Just kidding. You want to go to a place where you feel like family, where people know you. And when you get into a life group or when your kids go to Kidsplosion or when your kids go to Accelerate, before and after, there's this opportunity to connect, to hang out, to play ball together on their rec yard, to get schooled by the old adults that are out there playing ball with you. You know, there's an opportunity in your life group to really let your hair down. You had a bad week, share it. Maybe you had an awesome week. Share that Two, it's about connecting. The second part of our mission around here and what God laid on our heart was that we were to help people to really grow spiritually. If you go outside and you look at any of these ginormous, beautiful trees that have been around for hundreds of years, you and I both know that there's a root system that goes way deep. And it spreads itself out so that when the high winds of life come, that tree, it may get shook a little bit and it may get rattled, But if its roots are deep enough, that tree stands. It might even lose some branches, but that tree stands. And the Bible says this, in Colossians 2, 7, it says, Let your roots grow down into him. Who's him? That's Christ. Let your lives be built upon him. Then your faith will grow strong in the truth, and you were taught you will overflow with thankfulness. Life groups are about helping you to let your your roots go way down deep. You see, it's not enough that you just come in on a Sunday morning and we get to preach for 25 minutes. And last time we went over. And we heard about it the second we went out that door. First service. They're like, you went over. We're like, we know. We're sorry. We're trying. 25 minutes once a week, guys, it's not enough food for you. Try eating one meal this week. This is a fasting week, guys. Some of you guys are already dreading it. I mean, you've texted me. You're like, oh, Ms. D. We eat three times a day. Some of us six. I eat small meals three times, I mean, like every three hours. Keep my metabolism going. You need to be growing. And midweek, man, you could be having a rough week and you come into a life group. And not only do you get to connect and rub some shoulders, but then you get to study the word of God together. You get to begin to understand how does God's word apply to my life? How do I apply it this week in this 
circumstance. See, what's amazing is God's given us a passion to have multiple different studies going on at one time in smaller group settings, all right? We call them life groups. Some people call them just small groups. Some people do it in homes. And you say, what, why is Mountain Movers different? I mean, why don't we go to homes and like chill on couches? Well, listen, we tried it. In the very beginning, we tried it twice. We did life groups in homes, but guess who got left out? Your kids and your teenagers. It was like, let's focus on all these adults, but what about the kids and what about the teenagers? We said, scrap that idea, scrap it. We redid our entire structure and we said, we're going to bring everybody on campus. Why? Because we want your kids to be able to connect and we want them to grow. We want your teenagers who are at the toughest part of their life to be able to connect with godly men and women who will mentor them. See, I have four teenagers right now. And as much as I want to think we're all best friends, they go to their small group leaders and they talk to them. They Snapchat those guys like constantly. And they kind of keep me informed if I need to go like wring one of their necks because they're mentoring my teenagers. That's what our student ministry is all about. They're at a hard time in their life. And when you come in to accelerate, not only are you going to have an awesome experience just for a teenager, but then they're going to break into small groups. Guys, girls, middle school, high school, upper high school students. And you're going to have a mentor that then is going to say, what's going on in life? How does today's message actually affect you? How do you apply it to your life? So we're not just hearing the word of God, but we're actually growing our roots way down deep. So when stuff starts happening in school, you're able to handle it. You're able to stand up against it. You know, it's, it's a sad reality that today so many kids in school just take the easy road out. So they think and they take their own life. They say that a teenager takes their life every six seconds. But when you get your kids and your teenagers involved in a midweek experience, they get connected with some men and women who can mentor them, and they begin to grow in God's Word. You know, the Bible talks about how the body of Christ, how the church is like the body. And I wanted to do an illustration today, but I couldn't get a volunteer. You guys are really not all in. But I wanted to take somebody's arm, and I wanted to lay it up here, and I just really wanted to cut your hand off. Because what I wanted to show in a very dramatic way was that if I cut your hand off, in a couple of weeks, you'll realize that that hand has completely withered and died because it's been cut off from the body. And see, what happens is the enemy says, man, go to church on Sunday. That's, that's fabulous. He doesn't care that you come here. What he doesn't want you to do is he doesn't want you to connect with godly people. He doesn't want you to be transparent and really start growing down in the word of God and getting strong. He wants to get you to where he can just sever you off from the body. Because guess what? You'll wither up and you'll die. So midweek is all about helping you and your children and your teenagers get connected and start growing week in and week out, regardless of what stage of life you're in. And you know, it's interesting how Jesus... In the New Testament, we see this picture of Jesus coming on the scene, and he goes out and he gets these guys called disciples, all right, these followers, and he gets 12, and they start doing life together. They eat together, they work together, they go out and they minister to people, but then you begin to see this thing happen where Jesus begins to pour everything into them, and then he lets them go minister to the people. Think about this. There's a story about the feeding of the 5,000. Jesus is teaching all the people, and the people are hungry. Like, they did not preach for 25 minutes. It had been hours, okay? And so Jesus says, the people are hungry, and I'm not going to send them home. Go out there, disciples, and see if anybody has any food. So the disciples, not Jesus, goes out, and they come back. This little boy, he's got some bread and fish. He says, great. Disciples, go back out. Set all the people down in these big groups, all right? Set them down in groups of 50. Go send them all throughout there. Then he comes back and he says, now, have them all bow their head. I'm going to pray. He blesses the food and he starts breaking the fish and the bread. And guess who goes and serves the people? The disciples. Why? You guys are like, I don't know. I might get it wrong. I don't know. Who? (laughs) The disciples. Why? Because Jesus trained up leaders. 
You see, when you plant a church and you begin to grow, a lot of times people want to come to the pastors. Like, we are supposed to be the Savior of the world. Jesus is the Savior. We're his hands extended to equip the body to do the work of ministry. That's our job. And so we have begun to raise up leaders in this church. Leaders are called life group leaders over adults. In our ministries, we have student pastors. We have kids pastors. We have connectors under them. These are people who are trained and mentored by us to be able to pastor groups of people. Some of you guys know some of these people, but some of you don't. I want you to meet them right now. I'm Clayton. This is my wife, Shelby. We live northeast of Grove, and we have six kids between us. I have two girls, ages 24 and 19, and my son is 14. And I have two girls, ages 25 and 15, and my son is 22. I drive a school bus. And I'm in construction. We love to spend time outdoors. Hunting. (laughs) And spending time with our family and friends. We serve as Wednesday night life group leaders. We like to get to know the new people that, that come through each one of our groups. And we love to see the life change in other people's lives that we've experienced in our own life. Hi, I'm Grant Hendricks. And I'm Stacy. Something just doesn't feel right. No, something doesn't Hey, wrong. hey, I'm a state trooper. And I'm a registered nurse. And we live in Anderson, Missouri. Between the two of us, we have six kids. Three horses. Three dogs. Two cats. And a grandson that we call a monkey. monkey. Hey, uh, what I like about life groups is I like to help God arrest the powers of the devil. And I, I like to heal the wounds. So, if you wish you had the last 30 seconds of your life back, try spending a whole hour with us on midweek life groups. It's wonderful. I do it every day. Hey guys, we are uh, Dustin and Sierra Oxendine. We uh, have two kids. We got Gage and Finn, they're seven and four. Um, I work for the Kansas City Southern Railroad as a machine operator, and Sierra is a seventh grade math teacher at Neosho. Yeah. All right, guys, well, we love life groups. Uh, we love meeting new people, and uh, we love building lasting friendships. In fact, most of our best friends that we have right now, we've met in life groups. So uh, we're getting ready to launch some new life groups this week. We hope that you guys will come check them out. We'll see you there. Bye. Hi, my name is Charity. And I'm Jeff. Between the two of us, we have four boys, 15 and 8. 14 and 12. And we spend most of our time at a ball field watching our boys play sports. We are life group leaders on Wednesday nights, and I like meeting new people and making new friends. And I just enjoy uh, learning more about God's plan for our lives and helping others uh, see what God's plan is for theirs. Greetings and salutations from the Shock Shack. I'm Terry. And I'm Marty. We have three children, uh, Sierra, who is a seventh grade math teacher at Neosho, Tanner, who's an electrical engineer in Alabama, and Preston, who is proudly serving in the Air Force in New Mexico. And we have two grandchildren, Gage is seven and Finn is four. We would invite you to join life groups on Wednesday nights. It's a great time and place to uh, have fellowship and meet new new friends and and a sense of community. Um, It's a great time to learn and study the Bible. And if you join the FPU <laughs> life group, you get an extra bonus because you get your finances in order. And when our finances in a, are in order, then so many other things fall in line with that. So come join us. If you, if you can't join us, join a life group. Any life group. Pick a life group. Join it. Hi, I'm Willie Bard. And I'm Courtney Bard, and we have two amazing kiddos. Our three-year-old, Eleanor Lachey, and last weekend, my wife gave birth to our son, Ezekiel G. We live west of Anderson, and we serve as the kids' pastors here at Mountain Movers Church. During the school year, I teach third grade at Anderson Elementary. And I'm an assistant store manager at Lowe's. Some of our favorite things to do is hang out with friends and family just at home, just chilling and having a blast. On Wednesday nights, we oversee Little Movers, where our infants and toddlers get to experience the love of God with our awesome nursery workers. We also get the experience to hang out with our kids Kidsplosion Kids, where we get to see them dig deeper in their relationship with God. 
Hi, my name is Brandy Keith, and this is Brandon, my husband, and I'm the life group director here at MMC, and my husband does everything behind the life group scene to make it all happen. We are blessed to have three boys. We have a 16-year-old, a 14-year-old, and a 13-year-old, and we live right outside of Anderson, Missouri. We own a cattle and poultry um, farm. My husband is a full-time farmer, and I work full-time at the church. Um, some of our favorite things to do, mm, well... We love to hunt, we love to fish, we like water sports, and we love to scoot. So what is it that we love about life groups? Well, honestly, I love the Connect Games. But if you had to ask me really what it is that we love about life groups, it would have to be the life change. We've watched so many people come in and just get connected with a group of people and really start to grow and see change and it's all because of Jesus and it's also because of these awesome life group leaders. Hello I'm Micah Campo and I'm Sam Campo. We have six children ages 7 through 25 and we have three grandbabies. We recently moved from Texas about three years ago up here. We live on Paradise Point. Uh, we love to go fishing. I think that's the main reason we moved up here. We own a custom metal design company we sell online and we fabricate in our home shop. We are life group leaders here at Mountain Movers Church and we love it. We love life groups. When we first came, we weren't sure we wanted to be involved in life groups and now it's our favorite time of the week. Um, we get to connect with people. We get to make really good friends and that's something that is really important. Um, when you're all in for Jesus, you need those friends that are also all in for Jesus and it's something that has really changed our life. We've been able to grow in our walk with the Lord and we've made some really good friends. We hope to see you there. Hi, I'm Andy. And I'm LaDonna McLean. And we have two sons that go to Mountain Members with us, Eli and Dalton McLean. I teach uh, at Crowder College. I teach construction technology. And I am the principal at Knoll Elementary. And right now we are having a block party and lots of fun down here on Main Street in Knoll. We do lots of things to benefit kids and we just look forward to working with you in life groups. Come out on Wednesdays and join us. We have a lot of fun. If you're not in life groups, you ought to be. Woo! -hoo! Hi, I'm Cody. And I'm Erica. We've been together for seven years and married for one and no kids yet. We live in Anderson, Missouri, where I'm a third grade uh, school teacher at Anderson Elementary. And I own a construction company and I'm a wrestling coach at McDonough County High School. We really enjoy hanging out with our family and our friends. We enjoy hanging out with our animals. We really like to go fishing and we enjoy a good competitive game of Monopoly Deal. We've been at MMC since 2016 and we are light, uh, small group leaders at Exhilarate. We really enjoy making new relationships and building new friendships, and we can't wait to connect with you as your new life group leader. Okay. Hey, my name's Jake, and this is my wife, Lisa, and we don't have any kids yet, but we have two amazing dogs, Chispa, who is 14, and Grizz, who is almost one years old. We live just down the road from the church, a couple miles away in the Tiff City area, out in the middle of nowhere. Jake is a full-time farmer and I am full-time staff at Mount Movers Church. We are also business owners and we are also the student pastors at Mount Movers Church. This past year we got to adopt a bunch of your kids and the amazing part about that is whenever these kids come in and they get to experience Jesus in a way they never had before and we get to see it finally click with them. That is our aha moment. That's the moment that makes everything worth it and makes it absolutely amazing. I tell you what, you guys can see why, as pastors, we are so unbelievably proud. We have the most amazing midweek leaders we could have ever asked God for. We're so very, very blessed and so very proud of them. And, you know, you can see why lives are being changed. When you get together with people like that and you rub shoulders, you connect, you're going to grow. It's just going to happen. You know, uh, I hope that we've sold you on the idea that there is a God squad shaped space in all of our lives that God intends to be filled. We need to get engaged with godly people in our lives that we can rub shoulders with, talk about the word of God, and just do life together. All right, so today, here's my challenge for you. 
our vision, our desire is that, you know, who doesn't need to connect and grow? We all need to connect and grow. Our desire is that every one of you guys would get on either our app or go to our website today and register. Uh, some of these groups are already filled, and, uh, but we want you to get on there and register and become a part of one of these life-changing groups. All right. Some of you guys might be watching online today. Some of you might say, you know, uh, my schedule is so crazy busy. I just don't have time. Uh, I can't drive there in person, and I don't have time to meet for one of these life groups. So what do we do? Do we have the answer for you? I tell you what, we are excited today to be debuting first ever an online life group. That's right. And it's not happening. It doesn't have to happen live. It can happen live, but you don't have to be there when it happens. It's about a community of believers that are getting together online. It'll be one of those Facebook friends that won't come and visit you in the hospital. Although Maybe. they can call Although you. Although they can call you. You can FaceTime them while you're sitting there with your arm up in a sling. But but this is a really great answer for those. You know, we, we have... It's so crazy. We have hundreds and hundreds of people that watch online every week, people that can never get here in person, and we have people that have crazy busy schedules. How many of you guys have a crazy busy schedule? Maybe you're a truck driver. Maybe you just travel for a living all over the place. This is the answer for you. Get registered online today. Become part of one of these new online life groups and watch God get you to connect with others and grow in your relationship with him. All right, let's pray today. Father, we're so grateful for your presence in this place. God, I pray that each and every one of us would see the need in our lives to connect with others, to grow in our relationship with you, Father God. I pray that you would stir our hearts, Father God, to move to action, Lord, to, to, um, to be who you want us to be, to do what you want us to do. Give us that desire, Father God, to grow in our relationship with you. With heads bowed and eyes closed today, there might be some of you in this room that would say, Pastor Brad, you know, you've talked about uh, throughout this service, I've, I've heard real, I've heard life-changing, I've heard relationship. I never knew that I could have that with God. And I want to tell you today, you can. Heaven can be your home. It's, it's people like you that, that, that don't know what that is. It's why we do church. It's why we do what we do week in and week out. It's to help people like you realize that our relationship with God can be real. And it is life-changing. Heaven can be your home, but it's about relationship. So with heads bowed and eyes closed, I want to give you an invitation right now to make Jesus Lord of your life, to invite him into your heart and to begin living for him according to his word. So if that's you today, you want to make that decision, I'm going to count to three. And on the count of three, I want you to just raise your hand. If you're watching online, I want you to say, I'm all in. That's me. And it's so amazing how every week we see people not only give uh, their life to Christ in this room, but also online as well. And so is that you today? Are you the next one that's going to say yes to heaven? You're going to say yes to Jesus. On the count of three, here we go. One, two, three. Who are you in this place? Would you raise your hand today? I see your hand in the back. Amen. I see your hand. Anybody else today? Thank you, Father God. And again, if you're watching online, say, I'm all in. And we've been praying for you guys. We love you, and we're believing for God to move mountains in your life starting now. So as a church, as a body of believers, can we pray this prayer together in support of those who have made this life-changing decision? Pray this with me. Father, I love you. Thank you for Jesus. I know I've let you down, God. Please forgive me. Cleanse my heart and make me new. I confess Jesus as Lord of my life. I make the commitment today that I will live for you, God, according to your word, never to be the same again. In Jesus' name, everybody said. Amen. And MMC, we are a generous church, and we want to make sure that we provide you with the resources you need to be successful at this thing called living for Jesus. So if you just made that decision, we have a gift for you. It's called our Next Step Kit. Grab it on the left as you exit, or if you're online, message us your address, and it'll be in the mail in the morning. But it's got a brand new Bible, and it's got... A message from Brad and I helping you to know what's my next step, but I'll just give you a hint. Life groups. Start with life groups, all right? Get signed up today. Put your hands together for those who just made that decision. Hey, thanks for joining us today. We sincerely hope the message impacted your life. Stay connected with us by following us online, or you can find us on Facebook. If you would like to partner with us financially, we have a few easy ways to give. You can text your giving to 77977 and simply type in MMC. 
and follow the prompts. Or you could find us online at www.mountainmoverschurch.org and click the Give Now tab. Or you could simply mail your giving in to 24000 South 660 Road, Grove, Oklahoma 74344. We are a church leading people into a real and life-changing relationship with Jesus Christ that is contagious. We look forward to seeing you next week.